Support by the Hope Network Center for Autism. You can join us and be part of a mission that takes on the challenges, the barriers, the statistics, the seemingly impossible, and help us overcome them all. HopeNetwork.org slash autism. Why do you do this to me over and over? Dallas County Jail is close to capacity and full of danger. In charge of maintaining control is a staff of officers that is nearly half female. Come to your knees, man. Okay. Come to your knees. These women confront murderers, drug addicts, and sexual predators every day. And when they fight, it's not a pretty sight. But violence isn't the only threat they face. Okay, you gonna calm down. Calm down. Some aren't sure they can handle the job while others take pride in it. This drama right here is going to cease right now. We are done. Hey, come on. Hey. If there was a guy that wanted to come up and charge at me, no, <laughs> we're about to go at it. Sign your name by this ex. I mean, why do you underestimate me because I'm a female? For all officers, control is a priority. <laughs> when they don't comply, this is where they go. Man, you, man. Ah! After a while, he'll calm down and he'll be real cool because that chair, is, it's not comfortable at all. It's not comfortable at all. This boy. Please get away from the well. Please. Dallas County Jail holds more than 7,000 inmates, and two of them have just gotten into a fight. I'm not resisting. Hey, don't be spitting like that, man. Don't, don't, I don't, I don't care. Don't spit. You need to hold it in. A female officer escorts one of the fighters out of the pod, preventing another confrontation. Yeah, he ain't had nothing all day, man. He been asking for that, man. Man, you ain't give me nothing. Okay, okay you gonna calm down. Calm down. The fight is the latest in a string of violent incidents this how the all went down. So I was by the phones, I was by the phones, and he swung on me, and I just Perfect. Calm down. Hey, the free on put it behind your back. Dallas County South Tower is one of the most modern of the jails. It's modeled after a correctional technique called direct supervision. Inmates are housed in a large open pod with one officer locked inside unprotected by bars or doors. She risks being overpowered, but she can also see everything that goes on. If you're not gonna eat, stay on your bunk. If you're gonna eat, come to the day room. They know I mean what I say and I say what I mean. Officer Freeman is a 28-year veteran who hopes to retire at the end of the year. As a direct supervision officer, Freeman must command respect from the inmates and give it in return. You can't just sit behind the desk for those eight hours. You have to feed, you have to get up and pad search, you have to make your rounds, you have to answer questions, you have to de-escalate problems in the pod. Between inmates, you have to be referee. Being in direct contact with so many inmates puts her in a vulnerable position. You have a radio to call for your backup. You also have a panic button that you can use and help is on the way within minutes. In the pod, Freeman notifies inmates about important dates, such as court hearings, lawyer visits, and visitations. Matthew. You have a visitor. You have a visitor. Inmate Matthew Minnick's girlfriend has come to see him. Four weeks ago, Matthew Minnick was arrested on a parole violation from a previous drug charge. That's my downfall right there, is drugs. You're either got caught with drugs you're doing, you're dealing drugs, you're breaking into somewhere, stealing for drugs, robbing somebody for drugs. Drugs is about 90% of everybody that's in here. Since I've been here, I've seen so many inmates, they get released, they come back the same way. 
at the end of the day, that's going to be his choice if he gets out and do it again, and most likely he will, because it's an addiction. For Matthew Minnick, visitation day cannot come soon enough. Every week I look forward to seeing my girl come up here and visit me, because we've only been together now two months, and we were only together like a month before I got arrested. But for 18-year-old Jenny, this week's visit is even more important than usual. I think she's pregnant. She's got the symptoms, so I'm about 100% sure she's pregnant. I'm a little nervous. Her mom has never met me. She brought her up here today to visit me, so she knows I'm in jail. Not a good way to start off with mom. Thank you. For Officer Martin, it's another day at intake, the first line of defense for the jail. And it promises to be busy. Everyone you see here was arrested this morning, um, possibly between the hours of 6 and 2. You get a lot of family violence, those who like to beat on others. A lot of kids come in with uh, drug paraphernalia, weed, cocaine, anything you can think of. It's just a continual process. Like, don't you get tired of coming to jail? But no, they don't. Not at all. Hey, guys, listen up for your name and step to the front, OK? There are nearly 300 inmates processed here every day, 100,000 a year. Hands stop your head, separate your legs for me. And it takes a staff of around 90 officers working three shifts to handle the job. Nearly half are women. We'll take their fingerprints, give them a copy of their uh, property. The inmate will be called over to get ready to take their mug shots, as well as their fingerprints electronically, which will be sent out to the state. For someone who's getting arrested, this could be a really long day, a long process. It can make for disoriented or angry inmates. A lot of times, you can get some prisoners who may get a little out of hand or out of control. Officers try talking first. Here we go. Here we go. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. When that doesn't work, it's time to use force. Take it off. Take it off. What are you guys doing? What? What are you guys doing? It's just a suck. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Not Apparently, he got out of control. They had to restrain him and put him in handcuffs. Um, the mask that was placed on his head is called a spit mask uh, in case the prisoner decides to spit. Martin is a former college basketball player and can handle most inmates. But she can't rely on strength alone. When I see a uh, pretty big male inmate. It's the thought of, how do I handle this situation? I'm a female uh, officer. How do I defuse this situation? Because I'm pretty sure that would be a struggle. Come on. Come on. Closer. Yeah. I don't bite. You're not going to bite me, are you? Yeah, people think I'm a menace. Why? Just because of how I look. Just because of how you look? Well. What is that? Those are the pan those that's the conquest of last night. Oh. Oh, okay. The conquest of last night. Mm-hmm. When they uncuff you, take your jacket off. Take off those gray sweats, as well as your socks and shoes, all right? All right, I'm glad you had a wonderful night last night. What is that? Uh-uh. This is yours. Gotta take all this stuff. Yep. It may be a lot different when you have a male officer approach him. You know, they may see him and just, guys, I don't know, may want to size them up, so to speak. I Me, mean, it's a completely different deal. All of this, this too. When female inmates check in, they can trigger a new set of reactions for Officer Martin. On a daily basis, we have a lot of women who come in that are prostitutes. When they do come in, it's, it's just really kind of sad almost, like my heart goes out to him because it's like, you don't have to do this. Samantha Rodriguez is a convicted prostitute and an admitted gangbanger. 
This is her fifth time in the jail. This time, the result of a probation violation. The first time I did 17 days. Uh, the second time I did 20 days. My third time I did 30 days. And my fourth time I did four months. In the North Tower, officers are briefed at a roll call meeting before they begin their shift. Jones, L, you have fire watch and ABC extinguisher. Cobb. 19 year old Cadet Cobb is moments away from starting her first day. This is the first job she has ever had. The reason why I took this job as my first job is because it pays well. It's really what I heard, it's not that hard of a job. It's just like babysitting, so why not? The new female officers that come in now, they're young, and I think this is just an opportunity for them. Maybe they saw the ad in the paper or somebody else who worked there say, hey, you can go to the sheriff's department and get you a job. Some of them have a lot of growing up to do. I'm not really concerned about dealing with these people because you also deal with these types of people out on the street. It's just in a different environment. This is real. These inmates are in here for murder, robbery, rape, child molestation. This is a dangerous job. This is Officer Cartwright. Hello, my name is Cobb. Nice to meet you. Cobb. Cobb has only had three days of training. She must prove herself on the job before the state of Texas will send her to the training academy. Until then, she is known as a pre-academy. Cobb will now be face to face with inmates for the first time. Sometimes you can tell the fear on their faces when they first come in. They're like, oh my God, I don't think I can do this. And so they quit. These are your keys. <laughs> and this is your radio. This is your lifeline. So you'll go ahead and you can hook them up. Training officer Ramirez can offer only a slender lifeline, keys, and a walkie talkie. The first task Cadet Cobb will perform is to pass out razors to inmates. Put your hand back in there. No hand. Where's Kenneth at? Hey, Ms. Cobb, I was trying to ask you a question because you probably look like you're like 18 years old. That's none of your business how old I am. Be to work here. Um, it's none of your business how old I am. I don't ask you how old you are, so don't ask me how old I am. What'd you say? It's none of your business how old I am. So, but you look like you're like real young, like you're around 19. Okay, well, if you think I'm 19, then you think that. If you think I'm 18, then I'm 18. I was scared. What am I getting myself into? It was the first thing that went through my mind. Inmate Matthew Minnick waits for a visit from his 18-year-old girlfriend, who may be pregnant. Hi, baby. Hey, baby. Baby! <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I miss you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, baby. I need to touch you. <sighs> <laughs> OK. So I have good news. What is it? OK, I talked to my mom about moving. Yeah, we can move anywhere. Austin, anywhere you want to move. OK. Just me and you. All right, well, let's do that. We're going to. I want to know what's up down there. <laughs> Serious. What do you think? Twins? <laughs> Twins? Centriplets? Stop. <laughs> Quadriplets? Can we have like four a, of them? a pregnant housewife. <laughs> <laughs> with my boyfriend in jail. I'll do anything for you, okay? I'm serious. Anything. Okay. I hope you know that. I know that. Don't look all sad, baby. It is okay. Don't cry, baby. Okay? We're good. All right? Okay. I promise you. 
I love you. <laughs> I love you too, baby. I'll write you right when I get home. Okay, do I that. I miss you. I'll miss you too, baby. I love you. I love you too. For Minnick, the visit is bittersweet. We talked about her being pregnant. I hope she is. I really do, because I need a kid. I'm 37, I ain't got no children. I need a child. We're just ready to just pick up, move, get married, have kids, and start a new life, not do drugs. But before Minnick can be reunited with his girlfriend, he must go before the parole board. It's one of the things that runs through my mind constantly when I'm awake, keeps me laying in my bed wondering what's gonna happen, when am I gonna be out, am I gonna be out next week or am I gonna be out next two months? You know, and, and then that's really not even a guarantee because they could actually hold you in for six months. You think it's a game? At intake, the constant tension between inmates and staff helps keep Officer Martin sharp. On the lookout for trouble, especially from inmates coming in from other jails. We had an inmate who was brought in that was being transported from another jail, and uh, inside the inmates right pocket, front pocket, he had a handcuff key. That was just like, wow, okay, you guys were supposed to search these guys. Where I get it from? Yeah, that's what she said. It's a secret. Yeah, it's a secret. yeah. Nah, it's mine, I bought it from the internet. Off the internet? Yeah, I better get my key back too. A loose handcuff key is a highly dangerous piece of metal. It could mean angry inmates on the loose. I got some socks and shoes. Come on, let's go. and got all day, but waiting on you. Apparently, he wasn't smart enough to use it because he would have escaped. But anything could have happened. He could have uncuffed himself. He could have uncuffed uh, the prisoner next to him, let alone anyone else that was on that van with him. Um, you know, you could have inmates who may attack officers. And who's to find out? And they just escape. Worst case scenario, you know, it could be a huge problem. Put your hands behind your head, spread your legs. Now she'll search every pocket and every fold of the inmate's clothing. After Martin finds a half-smoked joint in his other pocket, it's clear the inmate isn't going anywhere for a while. Put all this in your pocket, grab your shit, go stand against the wall. Negative. I spent 23 hours alone in my cell, by myself, me, myself, and God. It kind of gets lonely and boring in there. Upstairs, on the women's floor, inmate Samantha Rodriguez has been locked down for two weeks. It's the price she's paying for assaulting another inmate and spitting on an officer. I really don't know how much longer I'm going to be in here. I might be in here a while. If she can't keep her anger under control, she may lose the chance to talk to her one remaining link to the outside world, her boyfriend, who promised to come by today. It was cold outside and I was tired, so I got in his car. <laughs> but he didn't have any money. But he let me sleep in his car. He was very sweet and he didn't kick me out. He wasn't being a, a butthole like some guys. He treats me like I'm human, not like I'm a prostitute, not like I'm a crackhead. He's never been ashamed to be seen with me, or he's never been ashamed to admit that I'm his girlfriend. Well, he was supposed to come last Friday, and he didn't make it because he had to go out of town. I hope he comes tonight. He said he is, but then again, he always says he's going to do something, doesn't do it sometimes. A visit would take the edge off being in isolation. When I come in here, I usually sit right there. See, there's not a stool over there like there is right here. So usually they get a chair from somewhere out there. I don't know where. And then we talk through our little phones right here. All she can hope for now 
is that her boyfriend shows up. There's no way you can touch. It's on glass. I kind of figured he wasn't going to make it. I thought, I don't know. Housed in Dallas County Jail's North Tower is the command center for a group of highly trained officers known as the Special Response Team. Their job, maintain control of the inmates and jail in any crisis situation. They call on us to de-escalate the situation, you know, combative situations, riot situations. Sometimes it gets real ugly, you know, it gets real gruesome. Of the 36 SRT officers, only six are women. The only female on duty tonight is 26-year-old Officer Gibson. When I first got here in uh, 05, it wasn't no women on the team. To qualify, Gibson had to endure a week of extreme physical tests, and she couldn't fail a single one. That's an accomplishment for me because it wasn't easy. It was not easy at all. But I'm tough. I'm tough. You know, I was in the military. Being banged up is nothing for me. Until the SRTs get a call, they assist other officers with their shifts. Tonight, Officer Gibson will be on the seventh floor of the North Tower. Hey, hey, could y'all get away from the window and go put a shirt on? Please get away from the window. Please, please get away from the window. On this floor, you have your maximums, you have your minimums, you have your capital murderers, the aggravated inmates also appear. Inmates with similar crimes or security classifications are grouped together in each tank. This tank right here is uh, where the aggravated sexual assaults to a child. So, If I was to take an inmate from two tanks and put him in one tank, he probably not make it out of there alive. I have a nine-year-old little girl, so I have to stay in shape to make sure I go leave this jail and go home to her. Because these inmates, some of them are dangerous, some of them will hurt you. So I do my part to stand my ground. I wouldn't let an inmate get the best of me. Razors, razor! Tonight is what is known as razor night. Three times a week, shaving razors are passed out to inmates. Gibson carefully keeps track of every one. Every single one of these razors could be a weapon. We try to be very thorough. We try to make sure what we pass out is what we get back. Suddenly, a fight breaks out in a nearby cell. Gibson gets control center to open the tank door and Gibson and her team move to take control of the situation. Listen up, fellas, everybody rack off. Everybody go to their cells and rack off. Everybody rack off. In the direct supervision pod, Officer Freeman gets a phone call. One edge Freeman. OK. Bye. Bunt 39, Matthew Minich. You're going to parole, sir. With news that his 18-year-old girlfriend may be pregnant, Matthew Minnick's parole board hearing takes on even greater significance. No. Nervous? Yeah, because I got to go in here and talk to the parole board, and it depends on what I say is on what they do. I don't want to be the, the, the guy in jail or prison with this kid growing up with a single mom, and, you know, that's just, you know, I don't want that at all, you know, because you know, that's just not right. He could face up to six months and be shipped off to another facility upstate. The more I talk about it, the more I think about it, the more I think about it, the more it just drives me batty. So it is agonizing. And sometimes when they come back in, they're depressed, and sometimes 
they're fine with, with the outcome. But either way, they have to suffer the consequences. So that's why I'm waiting on him to come back in and see what happened. A fight has erupted on the North Tower's seventh floor. SRT officer Gibson is at the scene. Was anybody arguing here? Stand up and hands on your back. Gibson's team immediately removes an inmate who appears anxious. While Gibson escorts him to a separate holding cell, officers question another man about the disturbance. What happened? Just tell me what happened. He tried to take me with his chain and I took it from him. I grabbed it from his hand and was tussling with him. That was that. Why did, why did he come at you with a Because I, I accused him from stealing my towel this morning. And then that's how the whole thing started. And then so he went and got a shot? Yeah. One of the guys said that the other guy had a shank. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and try to retrieve the shank. With the shank still in the cell, officers must move quickly before it is used again on another inmate or an officer. In the past, shanks have been used on other officers. It can make you feel frightened sometimes, mm -hmm. but um, you can't let that fear show in your face, you know, or uh, they'll use that against you. Inmate Samantha Rodriguez is known to have a short fuse, and when she's crossed, she goes after other inmates. Now she's locked down 23 hours a day, and it's making her anxious. It kind of gets lonely and boring in there, so I'm a people person. But today, she's about to catch a break. <laughs> Samantha's boyfriend, Ahmed, is in the building. It's a surprise visit. At first I was upset. At first I thought he was like mad, like he was had finally had enough of me. Like he was like, not to heck with her. It's not like her to just be getting in trouble. I mean, she it has to be something behind it. Like maybe she's missing someone or she needs attention. So with the situation she's in right now and you know the way things are looking, it's, it doesn't seem like too much good can come out of this, but those are the times where you gotta just stay strong and, you know, weather the storm. At intake, the process can be chaotic for both inmates and officers. So patience and a bit of kindness from Officer Martin may go a long way to maintaining order and control. OK, unzip your coat for me. Cold, cold. You can get back. You gotta take it off. I'm gonna get back to you, okay? This inmate was arrested on a charge of theft in another county, and she's confused about what's happening. When you go to court, then you'll be able to post a bond, okay? I went to court. I went just to see the judge thing. Yeah, you gotta go to our court. I thought I was in Collin County. Yeah, you gotta go to court in Dallas County. Go, go back there to the bag. We're gonna search you back there, okay? You can walk on back there. You don't have to cry. Keep going. Keep straight. Yeah, keep going. It's a little room back there. Yeah, keep going. You're almost there. Keep going. Nobody's back here. Keep going. OK, go stand right there. All right. She's kind of on edge about anything you said to us, so she kind of cried a little bit. She didn't understand why she was here. And, you know, I just talked to her to try to calm her down. You know, instead of just being really mean, even though she took a while, but it is what it is. So she came up. We got to talking. What is this? I found that in the street. You find a lot of stuff on the road, huh? I uh, noticed a couple of coins. So I thought if I ask her about those coins, maybe I'll, you know, defer her mind from being here. These are cool. Look at the back of those. I don't know. I'm Is that a new penny? I don't know. I I can, so. I can, I can have yeah, look at the year on the front, 2009. Oh. They're different. Oh. It just shows to say, you know, 
talking and not being rough and roughhousing all the time, you can get through somebody just the same. I mean, who wants to come to jail? I wouldn't. You're really nice here. Thank you. Thank you. It's been really hard for me. In the direct supervision pod, inmate Matthew Minnick is returning from his parole board hearing. Their decision, he must serve more time in a facility upstate. He could be there as long as six months. It's gonna complicate my life even more. I may have a child on the way. I'm 37 years old. It's just too much. So this is gonna be your first. So that's why, even more so when you do get out, you need to do the right thing. Oh yeah. If I continue, you know, the life I've lived, I'm gonna end up in prison and, and I'm not gonna get out at 30 something again. I'm gonna get out at 80, you know, too late. In her 28 years on the job, Officer Freeman has heard this story before. The number one thing they love to say is, oh, Ms. Freeman, when they get out, I'm gonna do better. I'm getting off of drugs. I'm gonna get me a job. So maybe, just maybe, when he gets out and say, hey, I'm gonna do the right thing for my baby. But the reality of it is, if he's on drugs, if he's got an addiction, he's not. I don't think he's going to be a big factor in that baby's life. One pair of boxers and the shoes you're gonna wear out. Hey, take your socks off, fellas, let's go. SRT officer Gibson and her team have removed two inmates from a cell for fighting with a shank that's now disappeared. Yeah. Come on, let's go, fellas. To maintain their control, now they must shake down the other inmates and find the missing shank. Go to the back of the cell, put your hands on the wall. As an extra precaution, officers have the inmates stripped down and stand against the wall. With the shank still somewhere in the cell, officers know that any careless move can result in a swift and deadly attack. The team checks every imaginable hiding spot. Behind the toilet, an SRT officer discovers the shank. This is a spoon we found. They sharpen the edge of the spoon to make it real pointy, and they can use it, you know, to harm themselves with. And so basically, these were, this was what one of the guys used to try to cut the other guy with when they was fighting. On a weekly basis, we come across 20 or more shanks. The spoon, we find that all the time. So you saying the the first guy we pulled out, you said he the one had the sharpened spoon, right? Yes, sir. After further investigation, um, it was determined that the the guy placed in the holdover was the one that had the shank. So we're gonna move him since he was the troublemaker in the tank. Both inmates involved in the fight will face punishment, up to 15 days in segregation. On the women's floor, it's time for Samantha and her boyfriend Ahmed to say goodbye. I'll be here tomorrow at 12, come by 12 or 11. We had laughed, we made fun of each other. He makes fun of me, I make fun of him. You know, he told me I was getting fat. I told him it's okay, he's going bald. Yeah, I love you. He told me he loved me. I want to be with him for as long as possible. He makes me feel good. He doesn't judge me because of what I've done. He is able to forgive me and knows that I messed up. There's a story it's called The Butterfly. It talks about this butterfly coming out of this cocoon. And I guess, I didn't know this about butterflies, but their bodies are swollen with fluids or something. Well, when this guy cut the cocoon and let the butterfly out and the, the butterfly was never able to fly, because he has to struggle at that little hole to get the fluid to go into his wings so he can fly. We all have to struggle. 
So you relate to that butterfly? Yeah. I think I am the butterfly. In direct supervision, there are no barriers protecting Officer Freeman. But the layout allows her to see if anything suspicious is going on. Cody, how you doing over here? Are you reading your book? You might want to go outside to, in the gym. Uh, if it's clear, you can go, you know, go out there when you want to. Sometimes we really listen. We're attentive. That's my job. I'm in here to listen. Care and custody of inmates. That's what we do. But the inmates also listen and observe officers closely. They know when you're having a different color uh, nail polish or lip gloss or lipstick, lip line or whatever, they notice that. They're men, they notice, you know, they're men and they notice. As a woman, I can come to work in a predominantly male-oriented occupation, but I don't have to look like a man. Officer Humphreys is a 16-year veteran. She has spent the last four years at the Dallas County Jail. I show up to work with my hair done, I have my makeup on, and I can wear fingernail polish on my nails, which is a reminder that, yes, I'm a woman that's in a position of authority, and I can do this job well. I work in a jail, but I don't have to smell like one. Sometimes, male inmates get the wrong idea when female officers engage with them. Just the idea of thinking they had a chance, oh, I want to take Ms. Take Freeman out, that's never a chance. Shouldn't even be a, a mind thought. But some female officers fall prey to the manipulative games inmates play. You have a female that comes into this environment. The female may not have the type of attention that she would like to have maybe outside of this environment. And because the male inmates, all they do is see male inmates, all of a sudden she's given all of this attention because she's female. I'm a charm. I'm a manipulator, I'm a connive. If I feel like I can get you or get over on you, I'm gonna push far as I can. Accused of murder, 22-year-old Carter L. Nash has been in the jail for 13 months. While awaiting his trial, he claims he has learned what it takes to seduce female officers. It's um, like certain things that an inmate looks for into a weak staff. If she always come to work sad, depressed, talk to her, constantly talk to her, try to manipulate her into doing what you want her to do, basically like power control. She may be told by an inmate every day, good morning, or you sure look pretty today. And she responds back to a good morning and what did you do this weekend? And the next thing you know, the female is indicating to the inmate what she did this weekend and there it is. Get them attention, get them respect, get them something that they're looking forward to every day. They're gonna do exactly what you ask. And when the female does not recognize that this inmate is manipulating her, that's when it's a danger. I mean, I got real close to one that was placed in a situation to where I got wrote up for sexual misconduct. The more information you give the inmate about you, they'll put it together. They can go to the internet, they can get out, they can stalk you. Most, most mans do it out of a rush or a thrill. Sometimes just to be bored, just to see how far he can get over on this person or how far he can take her or how far she'll give in. In the North Tower of the Dallas County Jails, Officer Gibson prepares for a tough assignment patrolling the floor where some of the most dangerous inmates are locked down in single cells. The single cells house high-profile inmates, death row inmates, inmates that are on restriction. Should these inmates cause any major disturbances, SRT officers are well-equipped to crush them with an arsenal of weapons. This is the aerosol grenade flashbang right here. It sets off a real loud boom, just like a grenade. And you will get down on the ground when you hear this. And it's, you know, it make your ears pop and everything. This right here, you put little pellets. This is where the little pepper ball pellets go. 
You know, you shoot these towards the inmate on their body or whatever, it stings real bad. Eyes, water, and everything. So this right here is real potent too. This shield is the electric shield. If we touch the inmates with this, especially if water around or whatever, this gives off a real powerful shock. I mean, basically, whatever they did, they wouldn't do it no more. I mean, it's nothing nice, those inmates. They don't show us no mercy, so most of the time we don't show them none either. Gibson begins her maximum security patrol on 2 East. We look in the cell, make sure nothing out of the ordinary is going on. Ah, right, what you doing up in here? What you do? Man, they put me on the homosexual tank and I beat up the homosexual. As she continues her security check, Officer Gibson spots Carter L. Nash. He has been moved from his tank to a single cell for destroying a smoke detector. Accused of murder, the 22-year-old could be facing the death penalty. Drug deal gone bad. Somebody came to buy drugs, but it turned to a robbery. So it was either me or them. So I had the upper hand, so I took them. Five brothers raised me. Mama died when I was 13, no father, so the streets raised me. Pretty much things don't go my way. I'm a nine times out of 10, I'm gonna act out. It's the only way I know how to do it. Despite his confidence, Nash knows not to mess with Officer Gibson. That's one woman you don't play with. She ain't gonna tolerate no nonsense out of there. For us banging, beating, cursing, nah. Not on her watch. You can tell when a woman's in, a woman strictly about business. You can't let these inmates intimidate you. I mean, for the most part, you gotta stand your ground because if they see any type of fear or intimidation on your face or whatever, they'll try you. They they will. They will try you. As men, we feel like shouldn't no woman be telling us what to do because we the men, you know what I'm saying? Just like in your relationship at home, you might feel like I wear the pants, so you can make your suggestion, you know what I'm saying, of what I need to be doing, but at the end of the day, it's on me. And with all the hostility, a simple request can turn into a standoff. You gonna clean the tank? I ain't did nothing wrong for you to make you clean the tank. You don't have to do nothing wrong for me to make you clean the tank. That's just part of the rules on being in jail. Right on, right on, right on. Following the rules is not a choice for inmates. But for rookie cadet Cobb, a decision awaits. It's way different than what I thought it was going to be. Just my first night, you know, I'm, it's going to bother me a little bit. But once I work here longer, it'll get easier. You going to come back? Maybe. Maybe. You did really good. You did really good. <laughs> I appreciate you guys helping me, though. Oh, yeah. Anytime. That's our job. It's going to turn out to be a good officer. Though. I hope so. For veteran officer Gibson, another ordinary workday is done. Basically, you know, this is what my piece is, you know. I leave the jail, in the jail, I leave the work, work, and I go home to my daughter and she'll come curl up in the bed with me. That's the best time. You know, we watch a movie. You know, I fall asleep, she'll fall back asleep. That's what my piece said is home. overpowered, but she can also see everything that goes on. If you're not going to eat, stay on your bunk. If you're going to eat, come to the day room. 
they know I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. Officer Freeman is a 28-year veteran who hopes to retire at the end of the year. As a direct supervision officer, Freeman must command respect from the inmates and give it in return. You can't just sit behind the desk for those eight hours. You have to feed, you have to get up and pad search, you have to make your rounds, you have to answer questions, you have to de-escalate problems in the pod. Between inmates, you have to be referee. Being in direct contact with so many inmates puts her in a vulnerable position. You have a radio to call for your backup. You also have a panic button that you can use and help is on the way within minutes. In the pod, Freeman notifies inmates about important dates, such as court hearings, lawyer visits, and visitations. Matthew. You have a visitor. You have a visitor. Inmate Matthew Minnick's girlfriend has come to see him. Four weeks ago, Matthew Minnick was arrested on a parole violation from a previous drug charge. Support by the Hope Network Center for Autism. You can join us and be part of a mission that takes on the challenges, the barriers, the statistics, the seemingly impossible, and help us overcome them all. Hopenetwork.org slash autism. Why do you do this to me over and over? Dallas County Jail is close to capacity and full of danger. In charge of maintaining control is a staff of officers that is nearly half female. Come to your knees, man. Okay. Come to your knees. These women confront murderers, drug addicts, and sexual predators every day. And when they fight, it's not a pretty sight. But violence isn't the only threat they face. Okay, you gonna calm down. Calm down. Some aren't sure they can handle the job, while others take pride in it. This drama right here is going to cease right now. We are done. Hey, come on. Hey, if there was a guy that wanted to come up and charge at me, no, <laughs> we're about to go at it. Sign your name by this ex. I mean, why do you underestimate me because I'm a female? For all officers, control is a priority. When they don't comply, this is where they go. Man, you, man. After a while, he'll calm down and he'll be real cool. That's my downfall right there, is drugs. You're either got caught with drugs you're doing, you're dealing drugs, you're breaking into somewhere, stealing for drugs, robbing somebody for drugs. Drugs is about 90% of everybody that's in here. Since I've been here, I've seen so many inmates. They get released, they come back the same way. At the end of the day, it's going to be his choice if he gets out and do it again, and most likely he will, because it's an addiction. For Matthew Minnick, visitation day cannot come soon enough. Every week I look forward to seeing my girl come up here and visit me, because we've only been together now two months, and we were only together like a month before I got arrested. But for 18-year-old Jenny, this week's visit is even more important than usual. I think she's pregnant. She's got the symptoms, so I'm about 100% sure she's pregnant. I'm a little nervous. Her mom has never met me. She brought her up here today to visit me. So she knows I'm in jail. Not a good way to start off with mom. Thank you. For Officer Martin, it's another day at intake. For that chair, it's not comfortable at all. It's not comfortable at all. This good. Please get away from the well. Dallas County Jail holds more than 7,000 inmates, and two of them have just gotten into a fight. Hey, breathe. I'm not resisting. Hey, don't be spitting like that, man. Don't, don't. I don't, I don't care. 
Don't spit. You need to hold it in. A female officer escorts one of the fighters out of the pod, preventing another confrontation. Yeah, he ain't had it on all day, man. He been asking for that, man. Man, you ain't give me nothing. Huh? Okay, you gonna calm down. Calm down. The fight is the latest in a string of violent incidents. See, this had all on me, man. So I was by the phones. I was by the phones. And he swung on me. And I just... Perfect. Calm down. Hey, the free on put it behind your back. Dallas County South Tower is one of the most modern of the jails. It's modeled after a correctional technique called direct supervision. Inmates are housed in a large open pod with one officer locked inside. Unprotected by bars or doors, she risks being the first line of defense for the jail. And it promises to be busy. Everyone you see here was arrested this morning, um, possibly between the hours of 6 and 2. You get a lot of family violence, those who like to beat on others. A lot of kids come in with uh, drug paraphernalia, weed, cocaine, anything you can think of. It's just a continual process. It's like, don't you get tired of coming to jail? But no, they don't. Not at all. Hey, guys, listen up for your name. Step to the front, OK? There are nearly 300 inmates processed here every day, 100,000 a year. Hands tap your hands, separate your legs for me. And it takes a staff of around 90 officers working three shifts to handle the job. Nearly half are women. We'll take their fingerprints, give them a copy of their uh, property. The inmate will be called over to get ready to take their mug shots, as well as their fingerprints electronically, which will be sent out to the state. For someone who's getting arrested, this could be a really long day, a long process. It can make for disoriented or angry inmates. A lot of times, you can get some prisoners who may get a little out of hand or out of control. Officers try talking first. Here we are. Here we are. Let's take off. Don't me like that.